We bricked on three drill and lock birds, but you know what? We're still going to build a board because we're playing Fire King. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever living boo boo staying off that like and subscribe button as we show off why we are not a combo player and why we shouldn't be playing Fire King. It took me years playing Yu Gi Oh! to learn that just because that a deck is tier one doesn't necessarily mean that I should be playing that deck or that you should be playing that deck. Whatever it is that you are most comfortable with, which deck you're playing, and I feel like that that speaks volumes to this end board that I made. I feel like the end board was not very good. I feel like it could have been better. Um, because in this match against Flunder, I ended up losing in game three. I think that this was like game two or something. And I came back and won just because I won the die roll, even though I opened up triple draw, which is just insane. But we went into game three and my opponent ended up beating me. And I felt like I really misplayed bad in game three. I don't have the replay saved, unfortunately, so I can't show it. Um, but... I wanted this to be part of a broader discussion uh, with when it comes to choosing a deck that you want to play for a format. Because I feel like this format, especially now that I've been playing it a little bit more, I feel like there are so many combo decks in the room that make it really difficult to choose what deck you're going to play especially when you don't feel like you're a very good combo player, right? You know, I, I am very much a mid-range to control player. You know, I tried playing combo decks for years, and even though I won this particular game, that still does not mean that I should be playing this type of deck. Because again, when we went into the next game in this match, I ended up losing. And I feel like that comes down to, one, I don't have a lot of experience with Fire King. I know some of the basic lines. But also, number two, because of the fact that I feel as a player, the more options that are available to me, the harder it is for me to pick that best option and to win that game. You know, keep in mind, I basically said the same thing in my Tier Element deck profile when I took uh, Tier Element to a regional. And... Tier is kind of in its own category, right? Because there's a lot of luck involved with tier. You need to mill the right cards. When Kelbeck and Aigido were at one, you really wanted to hit those cards and hope that the opponent didn't have like a hand trap or something. And even at full power, there was still a lot of skill involved because you needed to know how to think ahead on your plays, make sure that you're building the right board, make sure that you're putting up as much interruptions as you can. But despite all that, I decided to still try and play tier, and it didn't work out for me. Uh, whether it's because my opponent rule sharked me in the last round, or just getting bad luck on my mills, whatever the case may be. You know, you don't want to rely on just luck to win your games. But then I take something like Centurion, which granted, people didn't really know what the deck did, nor were they really prepared for it, and we would just win because of it. We throw in our main engine, our 15 hand traps, and we're good to go. Now, of course, more people know what the deck does, so they better prepare and know where the choke points are in the Centurion deck. And when it comes to Fire Kings, I see the concept. I see where there's just so much gas. I mean, you saw how this game played out. And just being able to hit the Obama Whale and the Little Knight and just, you know, still play through an evenly match. And then we have everything in our graveyard and just we, we move on with our day, which is really funny. Plus, we top deck Bonfire, which is just, just absolutely insane. But I wanted to show off this replay because in my hands, the deck may not look as good, but then you put it in, you know, someone else's hands, a pro player, they're going to make it look absolutely insane. And when you want to see success in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh!, I feel like that this is something that not a lot of people talk about, or it just doesn't even get discussed enough. People are just like, oh, Fire King's the best deck, you need to play Fire King, blah, 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 or you need to play something to specifically beat Fire King. Nothing says that, like, you can't play a mid-range control deck. You know, when you look at older formats, you can see the same type of of idea played out it's just wearing a different color of paint right you know you look at infernity when they were tier one when everything was at three infernities and x savers were popping off they were the best decks there were still other decks that you could play you could play a stun deck you could play a gadget deck you could play machinas you had these other options available to you and people could pick their deck based on their own play style i feel that this format in particular is a lot different because of the fact that when you look at a lot of decks in the room, or like if you took a pie chart of this current format, or even a tier list, I feel like a lot of people, um, honestly the majority, would agree that this format is very much based on combo decks, where there is still some back and forth, but it's also very combo oriented. I would even argue that Ubel, to a degree, is a combo deck because of the Unchained engine and the plays that you have available to you in that, to where, you know, you can end on like a Terror Incarnate or an Ultimate Nightmare, whatever the case may be. You've got Soul of Rage, you've got Muckraker, aka McCracker. <laughs> uh, you've got the regular Ubel, you get out the Sun Sorry, the Lotus tributed to keep you bell on the board. The Nightmare Pain acting as like a pseudo floodgate. 
And like you watch some of these combo lines with even a rogue deck like you bell and it's actually kind of crazy how many combo lines the deck has granted it's supplemented by the unchained engine but still it the unchained engine is a sub engine that that deck can play and benefit from it and get pluses and still build a board because you know spirit of Ubel says when it's destroyed it doesn't have to go to the graveyard so they can play d shifter which is actually kind of hilarious you look at something like flunder that i would argue is like tier two to rogue and it is a bit combo heavy but i would also argue it's one of those mid-range slash combo heavy decks because i mean if you just open up a robina the <clears throat> excuse me the play is easy you know you just go to eagle and go to m pin and whatever you know you move on with your day it's not that difficult i would say it's on par with centurion you know you learn a couple of combos and you know the rest is basically just autopilot um but then you look at something like fire canes you look at something even like labyrinth with the furniture cards you know you have to be planning out your plays correctly you have to make sure you're grabbing the right trap cards in the form of labyrinth you have to make sure that your transaction rollbacking the right cards or <clears throat> if you're playing a combo deck that involves small world i i would think that honestly small world is just such a wet dream for any combo deck because small world can connect you really to any monster that you need in your deck at that point in the game you know you look at something like math mech when they were at full power and they were playing three small world and they were able to just pop off at any given moment essentially with three small world three circular three sign at mining i mean you're talking like what nine twelve copies of circular at that point and the deck was just absolutely mad consistent but i didn't play any of those decks i went with you know whatever deck i played at the time whether it was sprite centurion later on what have you and even sprite i mean all you need to do is see two level twos and then you have your full combo you know whereas decks that are more in-depth combo heavy you know if you're playing tier element you're not thinking okay i need to see let's say for example merly and sharon and i have this full combo it's more like Okay, what's my opening hand going to look like? Okay, I opened up these five cards. What's the board I can make with this? Oh, I just milled a Kelbeck and Aigido. Well, now I have a totally different line of play that I can potentially go down because I'm about to mill 10 cards. And it's through that that the more you play this game and the more practice you get with meta decks. I know people hate this. They're like, oh, Avery, I'm not going to play the meta deck to learn it. But until you're actually behind the driver's seat of these meta decks, whether it's Fire King, Centurion, Runic, name any deck, until you're actually behind the driver's seat, testing on Dueling Book, Dueling Nexus, EDO Pro, whatever, you really don't have a 100% grasp on how the deck functions and where the choke points are. Because even if you're just testing hands to see how the deck functions and at least kind of learn what the deck does and where the choke points are, you may, as an outsider coming in, learn a different combo that other people don't realize that might insulate you from Nibiru. It might insulate you from a Lava Golem or an Ash, or if they hit you with like a Sphere Mode or a Lava, it doesn't hurt you as bad because you have X, Y, and Z follow-up. And I think that this format is especially filled with that and i think it's really interesting to look at and i think it'll be interesting to look back on in a couple of years when we start seeing people going back to these somewhat newer but older formats i know that's kind of counterintuitive to say but you know a 2021 format and you're in 2027 is going to feel a little bit more retro you know what i mean and so i wanted to put this out there that i feel like that this replay like perfectly encompasses like what at least how fire king functions but then also how you put it in the hands of a mid-range to control player like me and it looks i would say okay but if you put it in the hands of like anyone else on youtube this deck looks just leagues and above more disgusting than any other deck in the room like i've even been trying to play you bell and i've been trying to learn that deck because you bell is just it's honestly really fun to play but it it does not stand a chance against things like Fire King, even Cash Tira. I tried playing Ubel earlier today and I lost to Cash Tira. Like I activated Shifter and they just didn't care. And I'm like, Ubel is Ubel is not the answer. Like as much as I want it to be the answer, it's it's just terrible. But it's also at moments like this where I'm just glad I've already got my fucking invite, so I can sit back here and I don't know, sip on a beer and you know, just enjoy my life and I don't have to stress about learning all these combo lines so guys let me know what you think down in the comments below do you ever play meta decks to at least learn how they function how do you pick what deck you play maybe i opened up your eyes to maybe you realize hey you're right i'm not a combo player i need to play this deck instead because that's what i feel more comfortable with you need to play the deck that you feel most comfortable with don't try and be like your boy and play the best deck in the room because even though we won this game i would argue i won it very sloppily 
that and also my opponent sitting on two magnificent maps with a second evenly match and a talent so they couldn't play because they cleared my board with thrust so there you go and they also got drolled so you know we just got kind of lucky i feel but guys thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video